should be as narrowly tailored to accomplish our purpose as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so restricting someone who's not at the podium from doing that has a pretty legitimate purpose because we all know that was incredibly distracting yeah. from the activity that was actually legitimately taking place at the podium. And it would have been just as disrespectful if it had been another citizen you know, there at the podium as it had been our chief. Right. Uh, and so I feel pretty comfortable that that's the case. If the council would like to expand that, say, to include the person at the podium, you know, who's speaking, um, you know, that would seem to be something that we could deal with as well. Um, but that's something I'd want to look at a little bit more carefully, um, just because then you're talking about the, per the someone who's actually talking at the podium. Um, it, whereas when you're talking about someone who's not at the podium, it's not that they don't have the floor, right? It's not their right. time to be heard in the right. first place. You know, the guy that was in here in the background with the uh, middle finger salute the whole time that we were swearing in our new chief, uh, I didn't think that was, uh, that was very tasteless. I agree on the third one, require, requiring speakers to direct all comments towards the chair and that we refrain from personal insults directed at individual council members, unless discussing a particular vote or something that's about city business. But I, I uh, believe the, the little guy has the uh, uh, chance to take a shot at us that you know, we should be big enough to not let it bother us. We should have a time to have public comment, but a lot of the people that are coming up and doing the insulting and the, all the grandstanding are doing it for the people in the audience, and they don't really want to hear it. You move it to the end of the meeting, they're not going to have an audience. Maybe two or three people left in here. I think that'd take care of it. Um. Um, the fourth one says clarifying that disruptive activities include the middle finger and similar obscene gestures and are therefore prohibited from, then the language is from the audience while another person is speaking at the podium. I would think they're prohibited from the audience, period. As to the third one, um, which is a directing comments um, toward the chair and refraining from personal insults unless discussing a vote that was cast or statement made by that individual council member. I brought this up because I was asked to. This has been talked about behind the scenes here and by citizens. I've only got seven months left. I don't care what anybody says about me. You know, and like the vice mayor said, stuff rolls off your back, and I understand that, but. Does the staff have to listen to some of the stuff they've been listening to lately? Things are just getting worse and worse in a lot of people's opinion, including the public. A lot of the public out there says it sets a terrible tone for the meeting when you have to listen to stuff that has nothing to do really with city business. A lot of it is imagined. Some of the statements made at the last meeting about the uh, deputy chief and the city manager were completely false. You sure about that? That's why? You sure about that? You sure about that's not why? What's going on, buddy? Silly Echo here. And um, this video is going to be a little long. I did have a subscriber send me uh, some of this information. Uh, there's uh, going to be a couple different moving parts to this. I'm not going to keep this too long, but wait till the end and I give my final thoughts on this. And um, yeah, in Clearwater, they don't like to be redressed. All the links will be in the description. If you need to redress your grievances towards your government, it is your First Amendment right to do so. Even though they think that they can create whatever they want to try to create inside of their council meeting, they're trying to do away with redress of grievances, which is a First Amendment protected right. And this lawyer, he's a piece of friggin' work. He knows what he's doing is wrong, but he's trying to do it anyway. And if we don't stand up and say something, they're going to get away with it. So make sure you get this out to John Felix. Get this out to Here's the Deal. Send this out. Share this video. Because what these people are doing is just insanely against their oath and against the Constitution. So let's get into it. Don't forget to hit that like, share, and that subscribe button. And I'm out. Soli Ecker. Deuce. This is a uh, decorum discussion. So um, as the council knows, um, we've had a recent conversation about how to get through council meetings more efficiently. 
Uh, and uh, decorum is a big part of that because the purpose of any government meeting or any private meeting for that matter is to get through the agenda and to get through the purpose for which uh, the body has convened. Uh, the council has directed me to uh, explore different decorum options uh, that can help us do that. And of course, there's always a balance because on one hand, uh, we need to get through the agenda and to do it in a manner that's respectful of each other, respectful of our citizens, respectful of staff, and then at the same time, uh, that we are also respectful of the First Amendment uh, and that we do it in a manner that's consistent with the Constitution. So to that end, as I started looking at this, I found several different options. Um, and some of these are best practices, I would say, that I've seen from other governmental entities. Some of these are things that have been tested through litigation uh, and the validity of which has been upheld uh, by the courts and they have withstood a First Amendment challenge. So I picture this item as a menu of options. Now, that's like coming to a nice restaurant. You can order something off the menu. You can order something on the menu. Uh, you can order one of everything. Uh, and so it is entirely the council's decision as to which of these items uh, or all of them that you would like to adopt. It's also your discretion to adopt none of them as well as other items that are not on the menu. But I've presented these for a couple of reasons. Number one, I feel confident that each of the items listed here have survived First Amendment challenges. So that's number one. Um, you know, there's always going to be someone who's going to sue for something. That's just the society we live in nowadays. But I do feel confident, constitutionally speaking, that any or all of these will survive you know, the inevitable First Amendment challenge. So that's part of it. The second part of it is that these are all things that I have seen other government entities adopt in various capacities. Um, so there is some of that best practice aspect to it as well. Uh, so, no particular order. Um, they're not, you know, don't read anything into that. They were just the stream of consciousness uh, as I was uh, documenting it. So, with that said, I'm happy to answer questions as to any of the, any one of these or all of them as the case may be. But what I'd like to get from council is to go one by one uh, and to see if there is consensus among council for each of these, for all of them, for none of them. Uh, and so that way I know from a drafting standpoint um, what to actually draft. Um, and so with council's permission, um, that's what I would ask. Okay. Um, I want to start and just, uh, <laughs> I brought this up because I was asked to. This has been talked about behind the scenes here and by citizens. I've only got seven months left. I don't care what anybody says about me. You know, and like the vice mayor said, stuff rolls off your back, and I understand that. But does the staff have to listen to some of the stuff they've been listening to lately? Things are just getting worse and worse in a lot of people's opinion, including the public. A lot of the public out there says it sets a terrible tone for the meeting when you have to listen to stuff that has nothing to do really with city business. A lot of it is imagined. Some of the statements made at the last meeting about the uh, deputy chief and the city manager were completely false, completely, nowhere near true, amongst other things. So, you know, this is not about me. This is not about me saying, I don't want this. I'm doing this for anybody up here who has to sit through any of this for the next X amount of years in the staff. If you don't want to do it, fine. I'll tell the attorney, leave, you know, put it back in his pocket and take it home with him. So I want to hear what everybody else has to say. Yes, sir. So I think we've all had probably one-on-ones with the city attorney on this. One of the things that I think we could start off with is moving it to the end of the public comment to the end of the uh, agenda because, I mean, we're here to do city business, and it's nice, I mean, we should have a time to have public comment, but a lot of the people that are coming up and doing the insulting and the, all the grandstanding are doing it for the people in the audience, and they don't really want to hear it. You move it to the end of the meeting, they're not going to have an audience. Maybe two or three people left in here. I think that'd take care of it of it. Um, I also think that we had some issues before with campaign materials during the, we're in the campaign season again. Uh, I think that that should be left out because uh, everybody seems to sit in that one seat there with their sign and get, I think, unfair, uh, you know, uh, television coverage of their candidate, whoever that's going to be. Um, I would say if we did those two things that, um, and we could see how it all pans out, it may take care of the situation. But 
that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm up for listening to other things too, but you know, the guy that was in here in the background with the uh, middle finger salute the whole time that we were swearing in our new chief, uh, I didn't think that was, uh, that was very tasteless for everybody that was looking, but I think you, I don't know, I mean, he could make a, probably a case to say, and that's my comment toward the situation instead of a boo, but you know, that's just, it's tasteless in here. Um, so I really don't have anything against any of the things you have down here. We can try them all as far as I'm concerned. But I do think that just putting it at the end will probably solve most of it. Okay, other comments? Yes, ma'am. So I appreciate this as a starting point. I agree with um, Council Member Albritton. So the first one, move agenda items uh, to an earlier phase in the agenda. Um, so as you said, the point of the meeting is to get through the agenda and conduct a meeting. So people that are here at six o'clock to comment on items on the agenda, certainly comment on items on the agenda. Those that are here for items not on the agenda will wait until the end of the meeting and then comment. That seems fine to me. Um, so we respect people that are here for city business to comment on city business before us. Um, the second one, uh, city staff declining to publicly broadcast citizens produced materials displayed on the overhead projector um, to ensure that the city does not participate in broadcasting vulgar, racist, or other inappropriate material. I'm cautious about this one because I haven't seen big instances of anything that's vulgar or disrespectful on that overhead, and I really feel there's a lot of power in visual images. You know, I think of Kathy Flaherty and her iPad movies of trash overflowing in dumpsters and things like that. I mean, there is an impact to have a visual. So I'd be a little more cautious of that. Certainly we can have rules, and I, I would think we probably do, that you can't broadcast vulgar, racist, or other inappropriate material, but to prevent everyone from showing a visual, I don't think we need that just yet. Um, I agree on the third one, require, requiring speakers to direct all comments towards the chair and that we refrain from personal insults directed at individual council members, unless discussing a particular vote or something that's about city business. Um, the fourth one says clarifying that disruptive activities include the middle finger and similar obscene gestures and are therefore prohibited from, then the language is from the audience while another person is speaking at the podium. I would think they're prohibited from the audience, period. So people aren't flashing around the middle finger out in the audience and not only when somebody's speaking, like that man did during the swearing in, right? So I don't know the distinction, Mr. Margolis, about only when somebody's speaking you can't flash, you know, obscenities. You know, as I said, I mean, this is a, this is a menu, you know, that can be modified. Um, you know, I would say that um, a menu, you know, that can be modified. Um, you know, I would say that... Um, the rules should be as narrowly tailored to accomplish our purpose as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so restricting someone who's not at the podium from doing that has a pretty legitimate purpose because we all know that was incredibly distracting yeah. from the activity that was actually legitimately taking place at the podium. And it would have been just as disrespectful if it had been another citizen you know, there at the podium as it had been our chief. Right. Uh, and so I feel pretty comfortable that that's the case. If the council would like to expand that, say, to include the person at the podium, you know, who's speaking, um, you know, that would seem to be something that we could deal with as well. Um, but that's something I'd want to look at a little bit more carefully, um, just because then you're talking about the, the someone who's actually talking at the podium. Um, it, whereas when you're talking about someone who's not at the podium, it's not that they don't have the floor, right? It's not their right. time to be heard in the right. first place. Whereas the person at the podium has a little bit more leeway in most cases because they're actually at the podium. Um, so if that is something the council would like to expand uh, to cover the person, say, at the podium, um, then we could do that. But um, Or if you're like looking to expand it just to say um, at any time you know, during uh, the meeting that there's a no gesture of that kind uh, uh, allowed, that's something we can look at. But I'd want to look at that a little bit more closely to see if that would uh, 
be sufficiently narrow to survive First Amendment challenge. Okay. Because I was reading it as, you know, once you're in the chambers, we're not using profanity in the chambers, either digits or anything, <laughs> anything else, right, on shirts or verbally or with gestures. That's something that, that we're going to have to massage a little okay. bit. Um, so if it's something that the council is interested in moving forward with as far as um, prohibition on obscene gestures, uh, then that's something we'll probably refine a little bit. Okay. Keep in mind that whatever the council gives assent to today, we'll have to come back before the council after it's been drafted. Yeah. And so then you'll have more opportunity to kind of craft that a little bit more. Um, but before I even start drafting it, I at least want to know what topics you're interested in. Yeah. Otherwise, I could present an entire menu and you could say, oh, all those, all those foods are terrible on the menu. Yeah. And then the last one, we've got clarifying that campaign materials are disruptive and therefore not allowed within council chambers, regardless of whether such materials take the form of flyer signs or T-shirts. You know, I, I had mentioned to you that we've had candidate forums here where people sit in the audience with uh, their candidate's T-shirt or people wear T-shirts of candidates that are running for county or state or national office. I don't, I don't have a problem with campaign well, I, I think you shouldn't be distributing probably flyers in here or having signs. But if you have a T-shirt on that's not, again, doesn't have profanity or something on it and has somebody's name, I don't, I think that's a, a freedom of expression. Um, well, I can see the difference in a, a forum, but I don't think there should be any political materials during a council meeting. No. Just like I don't think there should be any be up, up here endorsing somebody against somebody that they're sitting next to, which I will say right now I will not do this next campaign um, in the seat that they're running for or whatever. So I just don't think it belongs. And it never did when I was here. Okay. And that's what just bothered me when I saw it. I mean, I, I sent a text message during that one time. And it was like, well, tell so-and-so to bring their sign out. I'm like, well, that's not the point. What's the sign doing there in the first place? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, this is not supposed to be a political rally. It's supposed to be an event to discuss the people's business. So right. that's my opinion. That's anyway, a good point. You know, that's fine. So mm -hmm. anyway, anything else? No? I'm all I'm, good, thanks. Vice Mayor? Well, uh, I'm in a minority here. Um, but I, I uh, believe the, the little guy has the... Uh, um, chance to take a shot at us that you know we should be big enough to not let it bother us um, I, I remember back in um, when I was uh, asking to be put on the downtown development board April 16th 2020 right there at that podium wealthy and powerful Scientologists many of them Titans in the community came to uh, uh, address us uh, uh, on that subject and one after another, they were calling me names. They were saying outrageous things about me. They were putting quotes in my mouth that, that I never said. Uh, Ray Cassano tried to play a video that he said would show me cursing and vehemently getting in the way of Scientologists. He called it quite ugly and reprehensible, but he wasn't able to get the video to play. Well, since he's an elected official, I did a records request, and I got a copy of that video, and I put it on my YouTube channel so everybody could see. This, there's nothing there. Um, you know, one, one after another, they, people came up and said things that were troublesome. Keenan Kitzel told about uh, a black family who moved near him in the south side of Chicago who found a cross burning in their yard. And he suggested that I am just as bad as that. Uh, having this bigot sitting in at DDB meetings would be like David Duke sitting in at an NAACP meeting. Grotesque, unsafe, and intolerable, as he put it. And as much as I appreciate Kinnan being a strong uh, defender of African Americans, I, I think he went a little overboard with his comments. And, uh, you know, that was just some of what happened. And I didn't lash out at any of them. Um, you know, I also don't remember anybody else speaking up from, from the day of saying, oh, perhaps that was, you know, uncalled for. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I understand I'm a little more tolerant of, of 
this type of behavior than most. Um, but having watched YouTube videos of the sheer insanity that happens at some council meetings across the country, I think we're getting off lucky. I, I agree the f armed fisherman with his uh, finger uh, was terribly inappropriate. If we tried to escort him out of here, though, he would have created as big a scene as he did when he came here the first time and was shouting and screaming just so he could get uh, video of himself with the police hauling him out of here. Uh, but again, I'm in the minority, so. All right, any other discussion on this right now? So what's your pleasure? I have one other thing I wanted to mention. When, you know, when people come and speak before us uh, for items on the agenda, certainly we take that into consideration when we vote or as we discuss. But when they come and speak to us for items not on the agenda, and sometimes someone will say, we'll have staff get back to you or something like that. I think it's important to have, you know, some sort of confirmation that that's actually happened. And, you know, if we can think about that, I don't know if it would be attached to the minutes, you know, an email confirmation or communication with whatever resident we said that to, uh, or if it would just be shared with us. Um, but I think that's an important step to make sure that people who speak on items not on the agenda are actually heard and, you know, if, if there is something we can do. Sometimes they just, yeah, I mean, if it's something that's legitimate, like this is happening in my backyard and yeah. the city's not clearing it up, yeah. or this is happening, then certainly that's what I always say, someone will get back to you. Sure. So yeah, it would be nice to know somebody to get back to them. Okay. Usually we do, but um, maybe not all the time. So, all right, what's your pleasure on moving forward on this? I think we should discuss with Lena on Thursday. Okay, this Keep Thursday, going. Mr. Margolis, with Lena? If that's the council's pleasure. Um, I mean, I, what I'm hearing, at least right now, uh, is it seems to be, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that of the menu, there is support, at least among a majority, for moving agenda items first. So you get through the agenda items first before you're going through non-agenda items. And in addition to that, if I'm hearing correctly, there is majority support uh, for prohibiting campaign materials um, as well as endorsements or any kind of, you know, I'll phrase it appropriately, political stuff. We'll just say purposes of this conversation uh, here, either on the dais or in the uh, audience, except, of course, during a candidate forum. Um, where of course, that would be permitted in that context. Um, but other than that, uh, those are the two, at least that I'm hearing, seem to have majority support uh, right now. Um, so I could certainly act upon those two uh, if there is, if I've heard that correctly, or if the council would like. Uh, then that entire conversation can be deferred. But given that this is staff direction and not being voted on at this time, um, I would prefer to have those types of conversations at work session. There will be a time for the council to actually vote on whatever comes before you, and of course time for citizens to comment before you vote on it. Um, but right now there's nothing to comment on from the public because there's, there's nothing before you. Um, I need some direction from the council to know what you're comfortable well, with. From what I heard, we kind of had consensus on everything, but item number two, possibly. Is that correct? Doing away with the um, visuals? Yeah, no, no, you, that was the one you that you three? said that you didn't like. Yeah, I think we should keep the visuals for now. Yeah, okay. I do too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One thing just to clarify on that point, um, yeah, I, I, I would not necessarily um, suggest getting rid of visuals as council member. I even pointed out there are a lot of legitimate and powerful visuals I think that can be helpful. Um, what I would suggest is council considering whether all of those visuals should be broadcast to the public is a different question from whether people can display them. Um, that's a very different question. It is not easy, I will tell you, to draft a rule that just says we will broadcast something that we think is appropriate versus we will not broadcast something that's inappropriate. Um, certainly for Joelle and her staff, it's a lot easier to have it as a binary system. Either we broadcast or we don't broadcast. Um, we currently do, um, and certainly by all means, we can keep that as the practice. However, we are not well set up for a situation in which someone does, for example, put pornography or something like that uh, on the overhead projector and our current rules don't account for that very well. Um, 
that's it. Um, we don't have to do any of these, let alone all of these. And so to the point about solving a lot of real world problems, one option is to simply allow the current practice to remain in place, and then if it becomes a problem, uh, to address it at a later time. So these are always flexible rules. Um, that's the nice thing about the main council rules is they can change as the council changes as well as a lot of our needs change as well. So as I said, just a waiter with menu options. I would say keep the visuals for now until a yeah, nice. You should be able to cut away uh, in the control room to a different shot if there's something being broadcast. It shouldn't be. Well, if that happens, someone here in the seat will stop the meeting and turn the cameras on. What about yeah. the third one? <laughs> I think we, you know, we let's draft everything but the second one, and then we'll see when we talk to Council Member Teixeira. We'll have another discussion at another work session and go from there, see what the drafts look like. I think that was the consensus, wasn't it, pretty yeah. much? Is, uh, as to the third one, um, which is a directing comments um, toward the chair and refraining from personal insults unless discussing a vote that was cast or statement made by that individual council member. Um, I think I heard uh, the mayor and council member uh, Beckman indicate their support for that particular proposal. Uh, I'm not, sh and I am hearing from the vice mayor um, that there's really none of these that may be of interest to him. Um, but I want to make sure that I understand correctly because we don't get to vote on anything today. So I want to make sure I am hearing correctly from each of you. I I, I won't object if this is the will of the rest of the council. Four items other than item number two? Three. Three? Um, no, the four, well, number two is the one we're not going to. I think forward. everything but number two. That's what we talked about, right? Yep. All right. Draft is up, and then we'll talk about them again. Okay, very good. All so right, anything so else? No, that'll, that'll be the plan, so just to put the, the epilogue on that. So I'll start working on a drafting of that. Um, we'll likely bring that back at the next work session, or at the latest, the work session after that. Uh, and then you'll get to see drafts of it. Obviously, the public will get to see it. Public will get to comment well before anyone votes on it, et cetera. Um, so that'll be the plan to at least start shaping it. Um, if Council Member Tashada, when she returns, indicates that she would like to participate in that conversation prior to that, uh, then we can always add that to a work session in the interim as well so that she can also weigh in on that. So. Okay. Thank you. And like I said, um, everybody, reach out to the biggest YouTuber that you think that would like to try to cover some of this story because what they are doing, I, I feel, is completely unconstitutional. This, uh, the city of Clearwater is gonna get another revisit and I hope that 50 of us come there and we all redress our government. And from, like I said, there's gonna be links in the description. They wanna try to ban shirts. They wanna ban profane language on shirts. They wanna ban people flick giving the middle finger to the government if you're not on the podium. They, they want to tell you that you can't redress your government. And this all stems because, you know, there's other people. But a lot of this, for me, stems from the Clearwater incident. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey. Hey, why you got your hands on me? Because you're walking with a firearm. I know, I know. I'm going okay. fishing. Look, I got a fishing pole. You're not fishing right now. Sir. I know. I'm going to that fishing pier right there. Okay. There's a fishing pier. Why, are you, why do you have your hands on me, man? And then it stems from... Their assistant chief deputy at the time, Chief or Deputy Chief Gandy, he put his hands on me. You can turn my mic off, dude. I'm walking out. All I could tell you is that you're a tyrant, you're a tyrant, you're a tyrant, you're a tyrant, you're a tyrant. I'm, you're welcome to be, I know. be quiet, but he's, your time's up. I'm leaving, dude. You dude, dude shut seconds. up, dude. All you wanted was five Why seconds. Are you? Let's go. Hey, hey, you're putting your hands on it's me, sir. To go. I'm leaving. They've asked you to you go. don't have to fucking push me, dude. You did the same thing your other officers did. Time to go. You put you, your hands you on me your once again. Up, it's time to go. You're, the chief, of, you're the chief of you're the chief of police and you're your officer. What's your name and badge number? It's Deputy what? Chief Eric Gandy of the Clearwater Police. Yeah, I'm walking backwards. I'm you not re I'm, it's time to leave. I'm leaving. You've made but it. you're a tyrant. And then we come back and here we are at their council meeting and they're still they just don't get it. The more they do this, the more they try to infringe on our constitutional rights. The, the, the worse it gets for them. And like I said, I'm not in agreement with any of this. I don't like Gandhi. I, don't, I really don't like this council right now. 
because these are all sworn officials. These cops are sworn, these council members are sworn officials to uphold and defend the Constitution. But their panties are all tied up in a bunch and they're all like, eh, it hurt my feelings, it hurt my feelings. I had to look at the middle finger. I had to look at cuss words. Eh, eh. That's all I hear from them. These people are getting paid by our tax dollars and they want to cry when we come there to redress the grievances that their police officers put me through and have put numerous other people through. When we redress, you have to suck it up, buttercup. But anyway, I'm just ranting. It's just, they are going to get another revisit. I'm going to look into my schedule. I want to try to do this before the end of the month. And if not, there's plenty of council meetings that I can get to go to and redress my government. And I'd love to see them try to violate my First Amendment or my Second Amendment rights. Yeah, we're going to see how well that goes for them. But you know the deal. Don't forget to hit that like, share, and that subscribe button, all that good stuff. And I'm out of here. Soliacker. Deuces.